Hi everyone, welcome back to our garden series. We are going into my mom's garden. I found these beautiful zucchini blooms. I love the spot of color that these blooms add to the garden. They're gorgeous yellow with a bit of orange, just have a beautiful contrast to all the green in the garden. So I grabbed my paper, I grabbed a lot of different greens, some gamboge, some cadmium, cadmium orange, even grab your cadmium red medium hue. That's gonna add a really nice spot of color and create these absolutely beautiful flowers of our garden. I'm so excited to be painting this series and this is number two in our garden series. Hey everyone, okay, so we are going to be painting beautiful zucchini blooms. So we're going back to flowers this week, our zucchini blooms. I am very excited. You can see too that I have over here, this was one of them that I had originally done. And you can see where the pop is gonna be, that color that we're gonna create with our cadmium orange, a little bit of cadmium red or gamboge, whatever you have on your palette. And then you'll notice too, as I changed the style of the painting just a little bit. And one of the reasons that I did that was because I really wanted to create um, something that was coming out of the center. I really noticed that a lot of times in our in the zucchini plants, everything's coming out of the center. So what I thought we would do today is I'm gonna start by doing, like we did last time, a little bit of a background color. I'm actually gonna use a bit of gamboge today and mix the gamboge with my cadmium yellow and then really lightly just start coming and merging that very, very lightly around some of my flowers. Instead of going having that green background, we're gonna have a little bit more of that gamboge color, of that warmth and that's really gonna make our flowers pop as well. So I'm just moving that around. We'll probably end up adding some green to it as well. We'll drop in some green. But for starters, I wanted just to give off that sense of summer sun, as well as I love the fact that these zucchini plants, they have a lot of yellow in them. As I continue to look at them and admire them, there's a lot of warmth to them, especially the new growth. And right now we really are painting the new growth. We're capturing the garden in the early days. Now it is July and I recognize that for many gardeners you may already be getting zucchini. I know my mom is getting zucchini. It's been fabulous but what I've also noticed is so interesting with zucchini plants is that they just keep producing, right? As long as you keep plucking off or cutting off the zucchini they continue to produce. So I really love that about these plants so we're going to be we've had a couple of zucchini but we can tell from the blooms we're about to start having that summer bounty where we are going to be figuring out what in the world we can do with all of the zucchini giving it away as fast as we can and probably not able to keep up i do love that that zucchini is easy to grow for those of us who maybe struggle i don't have naturally a gardener's Bent, so it's fun to have some plants that are just really friendly towards those of us who struggle a bit more in the, the gardening realm. And I'm doing some yellow on my stalks. You notice I did sketch this out with a micron pen. Hopefully you can see it a bit easier. I've added in some green for the zucchini leaf down here. I wanted to capture that. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit closer. You can see here I was adding in it was some new leaves that were showing up on the plant and they were almost all crinkled so I was trying to emulate the crinkling. I noticed with zucchini there's a sense of it just unfolding and if you have zucchini or your maybe your neighbor does or you're like me I'm, I'm borrowing my mom's garden it's really interesting to see the different shapes that new growth. The other thing I was noticing that in all of the blooms they were also there was almost like this unfurling like the, the bloom is protecting that very baby zucchini that's going to start growing and they have very much a protective instinct at least that's what it looks like from the blooms. Now I'm going to go ahead and start laying out some of my the blooms for the zucchini and I've got a light yellow green and what I noticed with a lot of these blooms is there's still some green within the bloom so I'm going to capture that and I don't want to mix the green so I'm going to let that really light color sit for a second and dry and then we're going to add our pop of color here. I'm going to come back and I'm going to get that darker green stem right here 
and I want one of my stems is probably going to be darker because it's in the shadow, right? So I'm going to come back over here and add this darker back in here. Just be cognizant too of where your stems are going. So this one is the one behind and it's popping back out. And then I have a lighter one coming down here that I'm just letting that stay light for the time being. I'm going to darken up this leaf right here, adding in some more color. You'll notice I'm just dropping some paint in and I'm using both a hooker's green and a permanent green as well that cadmium yellow and a bit of gamboge. So we're going to go ahead and let that sit there. I'm going to go over here, add in some more color. Over in this one, I'm thinking I might just drop in a bit of gamboge just and then we're going to let that those paints blend. And then I'm going to grab some of that green and just set it right on top and let those colors dance together. Pull that up there and making sure we leave some white as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick up some orange. I'm going to grab some orange that I've mixed with the cadmium orange and I took a little bit of that red and mixed it. I'm using my smaller brush, the size 2. This is, yeah, it, I'm sorry, it's a size 4. So it's a smaller brush. Two or a four is going to work really, really nicely. And what I'm going to do where I'm noticing the color is really around the center, almost like where all the blooms are folding in together. That's where I notice that really bright. Pick up some more color here. So I'm going to go ahead, making sure you can still see that. You can maybe bring it in just a little bit closer. So you can see too where I'm going to add that pop and there's almost an unfurling. So I'm trying to capture where that is. We're going to end up pulling in the color all the way down. But again, over here too. And it's an uneven color. It's not like a straight line. It's not a blob, but it's definitely, it's definitely a spark. Now I'm going to grab some of the gamboge and I'm going to start pulling that color all the way down. Get your brush a little bit wet if it feels like it's straining, like too little bread, too little butter over too much toast, as my favorite hobbit has famously said. Okay, pulling this down. I'm listening to Lord of the Rings this summer on audiobook, and it is delightful. I read it last summer. And I read, I picked up The Hobbit, and then I've been listening to it, and the one that's narrated by Andy Serkis, and it's delightful. Highly recommend it. I do not know how he has come up with so many voices, but there are so many jewels in that work of fiction. So many life lessons. Tolkien said he wrote it just for fun, but I don't know. I see so much of life in that book and things to take away. And it's just such a good story. Such a fun adventure story. Okay, I'm going to grab some cadmium orange and I'm going to drop that in there. And you can see I'm playing with this. I'm probably going to take some cadmium red. If you really want to be bold, grab some cadmium red and drop that in. And that will liven up your blooms for sure. Pulling that together. And you know what? Now I'm going to let it go ahead and dry. If you feel like it's too bumpy, feel free to take some yellow, drop some yellow in there. That'll brighten it up too and really get that brightness. These are bright blooms against the green too. There's such a spot of warm color surrounded by a lot of green. Okay, so now that I have those, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to finish up now with a lot of green. So I'm going to take some green here and I'm going to pull down this guy and bring him all the way down. I have a green stem here. And if you feel like your brush is too thick, grab the smaller brush. Don't be afraid to move around the table too. Again, I'm just going down. I want to capture that sense of depth. So what I'll do as well is I'm going to take the darker one. I'm going to go right carefully with my edge right down here. Let me pull this up to making sure you can see the whole thing. I'm sorry about that. There we go. 
get the edge of your blooms. You notice that some of them almost have a little bit of a crown or a protective shield below at the base of the squash petal. And I'm going to come around with this one and do the same thing. Coming back into our leaf where I know there's going to be some shadowing. I'm adding some darker areas. Picking up, I had a little bit of the red mixed with the green from last week's tomato, so I'm going to just adding that in. Adding this darker color in here and then over here where there'd be some shadow on the bottom part of the stem. And we're just plain. Okay, now what I want to do is I add, as I look at this, and I'm really seeing here, okay, this is pretty light. And if I want to just add some green, I'm going to maybe add just a little bit of green right up here and just end up, I'm going to finish with just moving some of that green around in the background. And what I'm also creating, that sense of the leaves that are surrounding it, when you pull back a zucchini plant, you're just surrounded by leaves. The blooms are actually pretty low inside the plant. So I wanted some yellow, but we're also going to add some green. Again, I'm doing pretty much, it's not exactly a wash, and I'm going to be careful about moving too close to my blooms. But for the sake of um, completing our painting, you may want to let your painting completely dry before you add this. But notice too that we, I don't even see how long we've been painting together. I don't think it's been very long. But here we are, once again, we have chron chronicled another bit of, bit of our journey through the garden in less than 20 minutes. I'm going to peek here just a second. And I think that's really fun that we're able to do this so smoothly. It's so much fun to paint. And if you don't have a garden, well then you can just come into this garden with me, right? We'll use our imagination and grow these beautiful plants. Okay. I love that. Now make sure to let this dry really nicely. Nicely. Let it dry completely. And I'm right down here. Because we're using a lot of complementary colors, if we have a little bit of merging, it's fine. Now if you want to come back and add a more depth of color, you certainly can. I think this is just a lovely, lovely painting. This is pretty bright, if you notice too, where these guys were not quite so bright, they're more of orangey. So feel free to, and if you, even if I'm thinking to myself, gosh, what if I wanted to tone that down? I'm looking for my paper towel, which of course, here it is. No, it's not. I can't, oh, it went on the ground. If I wanted to even dab it a bit, I could even take my paper towel, get a bit of water, and come through, pat it off just a little bit, and then come, I grab my bigger brush with some orange and the gambos just to lighten it up. And then come back over here and do a bit of a wash. And you can see even where that tones it down just a bit, right? And you still have the spot of color. You still have the variations over here. But there's always room to change things up. If it's a bit too bright or if it's a bit, you want it to be a little bit livelier add in a little bit more red to your orange and that will do it. I'm going to pull this color down just a bit right here and then come back up at the top. If you have some, if you wanted to add a little bit of shadow in here, we're not going to throw in purple which would be the shadow color I'd use for yellow just for the sake of keeping things a little bit more simple today but I can add a little bit of a darker color down here just a little bit more of that orangey at the base to create that sense of depth. Okay, so we're, oh, we're at 13 minutes. My goodness, we're painting fast. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I'm gonna let mine dry. When it comes back, I'll probably end up adding a darker layer right in here and then adding some depth. I can actually do that right now in the middle of this flower because of the way those that new growth, it grows um, inside, it, it starts unfurling out. So the inside has that shadowy side. So I'll even go ahead and add a little bit more depth right in here. And I'm going to add a little bit more of my, my leaf in here. Okay, and now I really am going to stop, <laughs> at least for now. All right, you guys, I hope you had fun painting this really beautiful squash with me. I will see you soon next week when we paint together again. All right, take care.